Hi hey guys, snowy out. It's sleet now. Well, sort of a slushy, snowy sleet. Figure I should show you what I'm doing. I've got the top off the wood stove in the shed, and I took some uh, um, stove cement, stove and gasket cement, and I put it around the ring, and then I put on a uh, fiberglass gasket kit, a replacement gasket, neatly around the edge. And then I'm going to put the stove top back on, and hopefully that will stop the leaks through that area. And uh, just for extra um, seal, I'll probably put a, a ring of stove cement around the outer edge, and then I'll have a better control of the burn when I do that. So I'm going to put the lid back on. And then I'm also going to put a ring of stove cement around the door that I'm not using on the back side. And I want to put the, um, actually I wonder if I should make that one the one I'm not using. I'm not sure which way this one looks easier to access. But with the door shut, it won't be. Anyway, one of these I'm going to seal off with stove cement. And the other one I'll put a fiberglass gasket around it if it'll fit in there. I'm not sure it's a pretty tight hinge and seal in some places and in others it's not. So I'll see how it feels when I get going on it. But I'm going to put this back together and then uh, see from there. Okay now I have a bead of stove cement around the door that I'm not going to use. Um, I don't believe this will be totally permanent anyway so I can always change this and modify it as needed. And then I'm going to attempt to close the door one-handed while holding the camera. And there we should have, hopefully, a good seal all the way around the uh, lip of the stove. So, um, it's just sheet metal pushed and formed together, so I uh, wouldn't expect a tight seal out of the box from this military tent stove. Anyway, I am uh, going to let that seal up. I have to run into town later and I'm going to get another piece of this fiberglass uh, flat rope gasket for the front door that I will be using. I did not buy two pieces right away because without opening the package I wasn't sure how thick that was. But I'm very pleased now that I've opened it with how thin it actually is when you um, when you open up the package and roll it out. It fits and made a perfect gasket around the lip, the ring of this stove. All the way around I have a very good gasket now so I'm quite pleased with that. And inside it hangs in a little all the way. Can you see in there? Yeah. So I, I'm quite pleased with that. And I had to bend this tab up a bit. It had been bent down in shipping and now the cooking plate sits on nicely. I am not going to put a gasket on there unless I feel later that it's needed, but I think that'll be fine. I want this to be able to sit how it was designed, and I, I like that so far. So there we are so far with sealing up the old military tent stove to use in my shed for normal heating. Uh, somebody said these cement blocks will crack with time, and I agree. I um, I'm going to put this on fire bricks or something later. So I will I will do that. Although the bottom isn't really really hot, it will get warm with time because this is just metal and it will conduct heat. So anyway, we'll be back later with some more gasket material and seal off the door and then uh, fire this thing up and see if we can get a controlled burn. Now I have ordered the damper for this I'm waiting on it to arrive uh, in the mail, so I do have a 4 inch damper that I ordered and when I get that then we'll have a full control over this little barrel tent stove and I should be able to really get a have a good control in here and then I'm probably going to steel wool it and paint it with black stove paint for even better long life and results because you can see the surface rust forming already just from the first use. 
Hi everybody, I'm back with the wood stove gasket material and I've sealed around the door and then I press it tight to uh, press down the, the glue, the stove cement and then I am leaving it open though for now to make sure that nothing squishes through and seals the door closed on me. So um, this door is warped and down here is wide open so from here down to here I'll have to put a double layer but for now I'm just going to let that cure and then I'll come back to that later on after that's all after that gasket maker after that stove cement is cured hey everybody finishing up the wood stove installation I finally got the damper I bought it off Amazon and it came in the mail actually I've had it for here for a while but we went to Michigan and before Michigan, I was really getting stuff ready to leave. I didn't tell you guys that because I didn't want my enemies knowing that I was gone. But uh, I went to Michigan and um, I had this damper come in the mail that fits the pipe. I hope it fits the pipe. So that goes up there. Hopefully it's going to fit the pipe and help control the uh, wood stove. So Chris helped me remove the two pieces from here. The rest is still hanging suspended from the air. So I'm going to put a hole anywhere at random in this pipe. And then the idea is that after that it gets technical and and uh, you gotta be sure about where you put it after that. So okay now how I'm going to do this here is I've got the one hole now I'm actually going to put the damper in the stove hopefully I can reach it uh, I've never worked with such a small pipe so I want to put the damper in and put the uh, spike through uh, yeah I can do it I just don't have enough light it's getting dark fast these days are shorter. Okay, now I've got the damper in place, and now I've got to basically line it up to where it's not too tight on the walls of the pipe, and it's centered in here. And then I'm gonna, I'll know where to drill the next hole. Right here. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that's pretty much straight in this way and up and down. So I'm going to get a tape measure so I know height-wise which way, and then I'll line it up and eye it up and then drill the hole. So, I don't think my tape is right here, yep. Unfortunately, I have to take my gloves off for this step. Chris can tell me, Kelly, it's cold, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. It's not nice without the gloves right now. Got nice wood gloves on. <laughs> it's cold. Oh, wow. Can you believe just random shot I drilled at four inches height? How crazy is that? No way you're doing it. Yeah. At least. When you can take a hammer and slightly tap on it. Uh-huh. You know, not beat it like you're trying oh. to drive a nail in. Yeah. Marks the spot. Of course, then I have a reverse indentation to drill through. Yeah, but it might that, be easier to pound it through. Well, usually what you do is you flip it over, use a uh, center punch, it just knocks it back in so you have a place to start your drill with. I still want to go and make sure I've got the four inch mark though so it's not crooked inside. Yeah. Here. Can I see that mark? Barely. Might have to go get my headlamp. It's getting really dark. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm going to need my headlamp. It's getting dark fast. Once it starts to get dark out here, it gets dark fast, doesn't it? Yeah. That's just all there is to it. See, I'm crooked. Now I'm just about on. I might just do your idea. All right, guys, I'm going to get my headlamp so I can do this properly and get the hammer and tap that in as Chris said. And plus... All right, guys, I just tapped it, and it went through, and it put a hole. So we're going to take it back inside and drill it. 
Okay, so now we've got this lined up neatly. Just out of the way. Oh, my hands are getting numb. You need help holding nice the pipe? Or What's that? You need me to help you hold the pipe? I think I'll be okay. Um, I'm just going to drill nice and slow here because there's a good hole in it. Oh yeah, it's going good. Perfect. Nice neat hole. Oh, I can't wait to get the uh, stove going in here. And use the heat. I'm going to put that spring back in place. The handle had a spring on it and I had to push the spring down so I could hammer it. Okay, in one side. Which way is, does it matter? It's all the same, right? I think so. Up and through, all the way through. Spring supposed to be on the inside. The spring is supposed to be in. No, that isn't right. What have I done wrong? Now this goes through. Um, it's probably 16 last time I installed one of those. Yeah. Well, it's in there and it moves, but it's not um, obedient to me. Alright, I've got to take it back out and figure out how it stays clamped. Alright, guys, I have a damper. It's in there. Let me see if I can show you. If you can see down in there. And it's in there and it works. Okay. It's awkward trying to show you with my headlamp while it's on my head while I'm holding this. Now Chris is going to assist me in putting this all back together. I'm going to get my gloves on because this is really cold. So you'll hold that top pipe if you would please like we did you. Opposite of what we did before. And I hope that it goes in there again. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, that's always the fun part, putting these back together. Yeah. Wait a minute. Let me try to, all right, excuse me, um, where is the hole there? All right, I might have to try to get this in and then you'll help me with this. It's just not, um, not agreeing with me here. I probably bent it while I was working on it. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah, working with these metal pipes is not fun. It's looking at the lip right there. Oh, almost. I thought I had it. Okay, now Chris, hold that up there, please. Just, just with the top pipe, the top. Hold it, hold it steady and push this in. Oh yeah, we're gonna get it in. All right, let go. Get out of my way, a second, please. Now I've got a wrench with oh strength, but yet not push it through the roof. Oh, yeah, I don't want to wreck this where it goes through the roof. Yeah. So, when I first got this and set it up, I don't remember what all I've recorded since then, but the deal is, I uh, didn't have a damper, and now I do. There we go. And when I started to burn this the first time, it was not a happy thing, because I didn't have a damper, it was too hot. Good, we got it. Nice. Now I'll go out and see and make sure everything's intact on the roof. All right, guys, well, now we're ready to do a burn. Yep. Um, this will be a whole video series, or a whole video, I should say. I'm going to put a series of video clips together 
to make this a single video that uh, took place over a long period of time. So I've never started this up since I got the uh, gaskets in there. I was waiting for the damper. So now we're going to do a test burn and see if it runs cooler and more controlled than it did before. So see you in a little bit. Hey everybody, I have a fire burning inside. Now, I don't know if you can hear what I can hear, but um, I can control somewhat the intensity of the fire. That's warped. That shouldn't work. Um, by, where's my players? I can control the intensity here by opening and closing this little door. Alright. I can hear it flare up. And I can hear it get calmer. Now I'm sitting here next to this pipe, so it's the stove, so it's not too hot at this moment. I'm going to shut the door of the shed for a few minutes and while I'm in here working. Help can keep the heat in while I'm right here. Anyway, I want to keep an eye on this with the temperatures. Why well, is it working? I have to put a latch inside here. I have to keep an eye on this and the temperatures. I have a laser um, thermometer. Um, top of the stove is well hot. Air. Oh, uh, it's out of its range. Pipe is four four ninety five. Up here at the top near the ceiling is 309. So, um, I'm keeping an eye on stuff. I'm looking at my, my most important uh, concerns are up at the top here. I'm trying to do this with gloves, it's awkward. The black pipe is 316. The surrounding pipe outside it is 125, 129. And then the outside silver metal thing is 67 degrees okay so I've got a homemade triple wall pipe here going on uh, try right there 333 it's rising 134 and then the outside pipe is 60 70 degrees okay so I have to keep an eye on this up here this is where it's really important up here the most important and scary is up there and then once I get the fire burning well I can regulate it with the new damper that I've installed and help to control the temperature um, of the stove. So that should damp it down and slow down the fire. Now it's going to take me some time and some experimentation here. I feel the heat rolling off but it's not uncomfortable to sit. And there's some little uh, pieces of uh, wood fiber up here that one just started to ignite, so it's just getting to ignition temperature of wood. Okay. So I'm going to spend some time out here with the stove and uh, make sure it's safe. And uh, just monitor it for a while and play around with the damper and the settings just to make sure that um, my gaskets are good, I got tight seals, and everything's going to be alright. And especially monitor the ceiling temperature to make sure that um, I don't get too hot and in a danger zone so anyway we're gonna heat up some stuff in here I want to heat up the water tanks in here and that'll help retain some heat tonight it's it's already well when I was inside a couple hours ago it was 29 degrees already and it was still daylight so uh, it's really cold out but it looks like the gaskets are making a massive difference right now because already I um, I have more control over this stove huge difference on the control over the stove also the damper I think I'm gonna be alright so right now I'm concerned because the door isn't staying shut and that's useless if I'm in here with the door open I wanna make sure also that the temperatures are gonna be safe with the door closed so I'm going to put a screw on that or a, in a strap and pull that closed for now. I'll be back in a while, guys. Hey, everybody. Well, the stove is a success. It's just a gentle burn, and uh, the temperatures are in toler tolerance levels. The um, barrel itself is 600 degrees. 
We've got 300 on this bottom pipe, and we've got 200 on that pipe. The black outer pipe is, uh, what do we say, Chris? 110. Yeah. And then the top galvanized pipe is 80. And the 2x6, um, uh, what did I say, 79 or 76 degrees? 76. So we're looking good. We are looking good. And I can stand, well, Chris is standing right next to that stove, and it's pretty comfortable, right? Yeah. So I think we're safe. I think we're good. Um, it burns furiously when you first light it up, and then you, um, but again, even then it wasn't dangerous temperatures on the pipe or out there or on the walls. The wall is uh, directly behind there is 100 degrees, which is summer, summer temperature, and that's fine. And um, I loaded it right up. I loaded that right up. And it looks like everything's going to be fine. Um, it burns furiously. You get it under control and you damp it down and it just levels right off and burns real nice. So uh, we're looking good. Got the damper fully closed and I'm going to leave it for a while. We got 50 degrees in here. So I'd call this a, well in rising obviously, I would call this a huge success. So, Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project, uh, taking control of getting a control of a M45 tent stove. Yep. Put gaskets in it and made it a really good and manageable stove.